What is up guys, it's Intel Tech Studios here. This is the Bissell Pro Power Force commercial bagged vacuum. Now, it looks similar to another certain style of vacuum, doesn't it? Huh, if only we had some sort of hint at what vacuum this looked like. Anyways, I got this on eBay. Obviously new in box, as you can tell. The box is kind of messed up. It was raining today, but... I don't think any water got into the box. It did have this hole in the box. I don't know if this is due to shipping or if this is, if it was like this. I don't know. I don't really know what to conclude of it. But it doesn't seem like it was, well, I don't know. I hope it's fine because otherwise I'd be very upset. Good news is I spent $40 on this. So for about the price of what a next-gen power force is right now at Walmart, I got the professional old school style, which these, they do sell them at retail. They're not, like, I do see them at Costco and places like that. I don't, I think it was Costco, where they have these just where any consumer can just walk in and buy it um, in a regular big box store. But this usually retails for around 150 to 200 something dollars. Uh, 150 is the low end. So even though this is starchly similar to the vacuum that used to cost $40, $50, it's really expensive for some reason. Probably because Bissell knows, and they're not the only company to do this. Hoover has done it as well, uh, TTI with both Hoover and Oric. They take old designs, um, sell them with a new color and a new paint job, and maybe a different cord to the professional market for a much higher price than they originally were sold to consumers at. And maybe they'll update the plastic or something to make it more premium or more durable, you know, for a commercial setting. And that's about it. So that's probably the case here. And that's pretty much the reason why I got this. I found a good deal. The next cheapest one was over $100. And it was one that was in bad shape. So there's no point in doing that because I might as well just spend the extra 50 bucks and get one brand new at a regular store. But I found this one for 40 so I jumped on it. Because I was going to buy one of the new gen Power Forces anyway. But then I saw this and I was like... Oh my god, the, gimme. So I did. And as a result, I haven't been using the Kenmore that much. So I'm thinking about selling that, uh, all the attachments and everything. I would say to like hit me up and all that if you want it, but that vacuum's heavy and shipping is going to be way too expensive on it. So I'm probably not going to ship it, unfortunately. So, but I am considering selling that and then essentially putting this in its place. Even though, yes, I know some people are going to complain that that's a better vacuum. Yeah, I know. Like, even me as a fan of these, I that's a better vacuum. But I like these. This was a good deal. It's durable. It's cheap. And this is something that I would use way more often because the biggest thing is the weight. That thing's heavy. This is not. Anyways, let's shut up and unbox this. So, interesting note is that this has markings on the box. It has, there's, apparently this was originally shipped to some, an Amazon site in Lakeland, Florida, which is funny. And then there's the Edmar Corporation. So it's shipped from the Edmar Corporation. I don't know what that is. That's the model number, quantity one, carton. This is a marked carton, number seven of 16, which is interesting. And then it has some type of art code. So I don't know what the origins of this machine is, but I'm intrigued. And again, the box, this thing has clearly gone through some shit, So it'll be interesting to see what... Any other... I guess before we open it, I guess we could look at the box. Or maybe we could... I don't know. So at the top of the box, we see Bissell. I'm assuming they said Bissell Big Green Commercial. And then Pro. I'm assuming that said Pro Power Force Commercial Bagged Vacuum. So it's the Pro Power Force and not the Power Force Pro, which sounds a lot cooler. Not many people have made videos on this machine, which is another reason why I wanted to get it. Because there's a million and one videos on the new on Power Forces, um, but this one, there's not many videos. There's mostly crappy demo reels from from retailers. There's one that I believe came from Bissell itself with very terrible production quality that looks like it was made in Windows XP Movie Maker and then there's just like a, like one or two collectors who have one and they don't have the best camera quality so we can see this advertised you got photos of the back and the front that kind of thing so this is very similar to the 71Y7 and the 1398 model power forces 
Um, this is also sold alongside what what is known as the Bissell Big Green uh, Big Cup, which is again an older style that's based on the older style of the Bissell Power Force Helix. So in both cases, they took the older designs and basically rebadged them as commercial units and continue selling the older designs. And this worked. There's a lot of people who liked the older Power Force design. They hated the new one. Then they tried this out. And there's a lot of positive reviews of it for that reason. You can buy these on Amazon. I actually linked to this in my Power Force review because it's the most similar machine that was available on Amazon. And I want to use my affiliate links. So this is basically my actually testing this to make sure it does live up to my standards and also because I wanted one. Um, and then we look at this. You can see this graphic. Powerful suction, great performance for an all-around cream. There's a hole in the box. Not sure what happened there. I don't know if something was dropped on it and it dented in the box. Versatile convenience with onboard tools and lightweight design, multi-level filtration. Stretch hose provides extra reach. 13 and a half inch cleaning path. Very similar advertising to the legacy model that this replaced. So we actually have a, a date code, or not a date code, a, uh, we do have some, a serial number. I believe this is where it was built. 1580 Holiday Road, Cookville, Tennessee. Pro Power Force commercial bag vacuum. So if we look at the sides, I can flip this on its side. The bottom kind of worries me because the bottom is really wet because it was raining outside today. And I almost dropped it. I hope that this did not get wet in a way that would damage it. I'm sure it wouldn't. I'm sure it'll be okay. But we can see we have the same diagram. Stretch hose, extension wand, power cord, onboard tools, crevice tool, combo tool, brush settings, powerful suction. And then this where we have all the tech specs. I really like how they have the, like how intricate these are for their commercial products. So we have the model number, the UPC code, the cord length, 35 feet. That's another reason why I want to check this out because of the really long cord and that lawnmower style plug where I can replace the cord so it gets chewed up. I know Jameson would love this because his has a uh, his cord is all chewed up, so if you have one of these, you can replace the cord pretty easily. 120 volts, 10 amps. So this isn't, actually, I should clarify, this is the 71Y7 based model. Because the 71Y7 is a 10 amp model, the 1398 is an 8 amp unit. So, that is an 8 amp model. And I believe the, Pro, the Power Force Helix one is also a 10 amp model, despite the originals in both cases being 8 amp motors. So, it's weird like they have like the older style shell but the newest of the older styles in both cases for the bag and the bagless but the motors are even one generation back in terms of the amperage which is weird but also very interesting in my opinion and they even have measure air performance and sound pressure 82 decibels weight with cord and without cord so with the cord, it's about 14 pounds. Oh, that is one thing that I didn't even think about, is that because it has more cord, it'll be a little bit heavier. But 14 pounds is still all right. And then without the cord, it's 12 pounds. So, so the cord weighs an extra 2 pounds. And then I'm assuming the other side is the same thing. Is there anything on the bottom? Nope. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that was easy. Did I open this upside down? I don't think I did. There we go. Okay, so scissors are no longer needed. I think I opened this correctly. Okay, we got some cardboard that's pretty badly mangled. This is just loose in the box. And this, got a brand new combination dusting brush and upholstery tool, which is on the upholstery side, which is interesting. I've never opened up one of these and had it be on the upholstery side. It always was shipped with it on the brush side. That's something that like nobody would notice, but I for some reason noticed that. And focus again. So I'm assuming this is the hose or the stretch hose. So the collar is already attached to the hose instead of the machine. And how is this in this box? This is 
trying to figure out, okay, here is the, what's a good way to get this out of here? Uh, hmm. Oh, there's the cord, okay. That's a bright yellow cord. And here is the crevice tool. Oh, what? You get the, oh. Uh, so, that is a disappointment. You get the the tiny little crevice tool from the Power Force Compact and not the full like crevice tool from the older Power Forces. That's kind of disappointing. But no big deal. I have other crevice tools. And plus that one, actually I think this one is longer than the one on my Helix. I don't know. I'll have to look at that later. It, it I, I think it is a little bit longer. So it should be good. It should probably be good enough. And also, yep, the extension wand. Nice brand new shiny extension wand. All right. And now I can pull out the hose. Dusty, just like random particles on it. I've never seen one of these newer gen Power Force hoses. So that's interesting. Clear hose. So we'll check that out. And now we should have enough let clearance. So here's the little plug that comes out of the Oh yeah. So that so yeah, the cord this cord is a separate piece because it has that lawnmower style where it's like a, it's basically like an extension cord that it comes with. And then it just has a small plug that comes off the end of the machine. Which is very interesting. But very common if you're familiar with commercial products. We have this lovely bright green handle. And I don't think there's much else. Got some, of course, there's no handle because it's not installed. I'm just going to pull this out. And probably an instruction manual in there. And we will. Set this, there we go, click that right into place. And the only other thing in here is some cardboard. Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, yep, so we have Pro Power Force Users Guide 1451 Series. Nice. Huh, what's this copyright dated? 2017, okay, so this is an older stock of it. Now, I have no idea what this is. What is this? I'm honestly not sure. I don't know what this is. Here's the big reveal. Pull off all this paper. And there we go. Ooh. So this is the unit. Very bright green. I'm trying to see, notice there's some, not moisture, but like a condensation on this, almost. Man, this is brand new. Yeah, see, ew, there is like some type of dust. Like very, min like not the kind of, not like dust dust, but like dust, if that makes sense. You also got that lovely clear hose that is brand new. And we have the ratings plate. So you can see that model. BG14 Fee 5, not Fee, 51T. This is a 10 amp unit. And it's interesting. So I don't know any way to date this since it doesn't use the regular model numbers but at the same time that I'm gonna guess 2017 because the user's manual said it was 2017 and yeah so that's that have the oh geez almost fell over there is a scratch oh that's unfortunate there's a scratch right there on the bag door 
It's the only blemish I noticed so far. And I don't even know if you can see. Yeah, right there. A little blemish. Which I'm sure I can get that off with like a sponge or something. That's no big deal. And lay this down. Try to be super careful because I don't want to scratch it. Now, there are some newer versions of this machine that I've seen that don't have a bumper, which is terrible. This is thankfully the one that has the bumper, so I'm very happy about that. And this actually has some text on the front about it using Style 7 filters and belts, which is nice because the consumer ones at the end of it had a completely, you know, untexted base, meaning that consumers were constantly confused about what they should buy and oh my god so we have brand new brush roll and sole plate and everything brand new and I could act I couldn't actually put this brush on my on my 3522 if I really wanted to but I'm not gonna do that because this is gonna be the main one that I'm actually using and I'm also trying to check to see if the belt has enough torque or if it's sitting in a warehouse for however long means I'll need to replace it, but I don't think so. It seems... Well... Yeah, should be alright. And actually, we do have another blemish. Some dust from my usage, or from my exposure to this. There's another small blemish, small scratch right there. And that's really it, just those two tiny marks on this entire thing. So, yeah. And that's weird. The height adjuster is by default set on the second to lowest setting. Usually when I get these machines by default they're set on medium. Huh. That's weird. Still swapped from the older power force. So now we're going to put the handle on. So we have the screws. How does this bag open? Yep, there we go. Yep, so it has the screws on the top of the handle, like they always do. And so there's the handle. And of course, we'll just slide this on, just like usual. And that pops in just fine. I'll screw in the screws off camera. Or the screw. It's only, I forgot in this. Oh, wait, no, there is two screws here. What's the other screw for? Is there... There's only one screw there. Oh, wait a minute. No, there's three screws in here. The other two are for the hose collar. Okay. So. Yeah, so we'll take the hose collar. And actually, we're going to disconnect the hose from... No, I guess not. Is there any blemishes? Is there a scratch on here, too? Whatever. Okay, I'm just gonna put this thing, the, uh, the rest of this apart, uh, together, not apart. I'm gonna put the rest of this together, and then I will get back to you via the power of editing. Okay, well, I got all of the screws together on this, and also, I remembered what this is. It's a bracket to hold this cord, uh, piece together, so that way they don't come undone, and then... Basically, for if you want to make sure this cord stays with this vacuum, then that's kind of the way that you would do it to make sure your employees or whoever would use this machine don't run off with the extension cord and then you can't use the vacuum. So that's why. And, oh, I forgot to put on the hose. Okay, well, that will do live. We will do it live. Because I did deattach the hose collar. And that just pops in. There we go. So that pops in like that. And then this, this of course, and the vacuum tries to roll away from me. 
this cord seems to get in the way. Pop this down into, is that another blemish? No, it's fine. Pops down into the base. It's it's brand new, so it's a it's a tight fit. And then we can rotate this so this is even. And then now we pull this up here so we can clip it into place. And there we go. There's that stretch hose, which I've never used on a power force. I've never used this newer style stretch hose. It's thinner than the one on the turbos. In fact, it's almost identical to the one on the CleanView Power Track. In fact, because here's the, well, here's the first, this is the one that Buster's getting. Uh, so this one obviously has the fixed hose. This is the oldest version that, of course, has the spinning hose. In fact, let me turn on my closet light and we can see move the helix out of the way and so I'm selling the Kenmore the helix and maybe the dirt devil or the power track I'm not sure which so here's the power track and you can see that they both have a clear somewhat thin stretch hose but this one's obviously older, so despite me cleaning it out, it still has kind of a yellow tint to it, whereas this one is still still clear. You can still see through it. You can see my hand. So yeah, that's... I'm actually considering switching this with the hose from my Power Force, since I'm probably not going to use this clear hose too much, and it's going to look kind of grimy afterwards. But I don't know. It works. It worked very nicely on the uh, on the power track. So now we just have to attach the attachments, and we'll be in good shape. So just trying to do this with one hand is a pain. Brace it with my foot, and then pop that on. I prefer to put it with a dust brush facing this way because there's more clearance on this side versus this side. And I'm very particular about that. You can see this one's the same way. So, and then the nice new extension wand. And then this pathetic stubby little crevice tool, which does thankfully lock in. Unlike the 1398 Power Force that Phantom Lightning had, where this wasn't even... So this isn't an actual Power Force compact crevice tool because the stubs are actually enough to where it'll lock into this. And I, I see some people where they leave it like this, which I guess is fine if you want it to be like more accessible and just, you know, do that. But I'm going to put it in properly. That's how it's supposed to go. Now we've already looked at the bottom and everything. Let's check the filter situation. I don't know if this has a bag in it or not. Oh, this is tight. Ah. Oh, it does. Style 7 EnviroFresh. Ooh, I haven't seen one of these in a long time. Obviously no bag change indicator. So, none of that. None of that fancy stuff. But we have this EnviroFresh bag, which is interesting. So, I'm not going to use this, though. Because we're going to pull this out. There. So yeah, I'm gonna, ooh, that's very clean. So I'm not going to use this because I have my own set of bags. In fact, I have one in this that I'm going to use because I was already using this one. So I'd rather do that so I'm not dirtying another bag for no reason at all. Well, I don't know, maybe I should maybe I should put a new bag in it, I don't know. There. Yeah, I'll do that. Also a note, Bissell went out of their way to make sure that these older style bag doors do not fit on the newer machines. 
so that's very pleasant. But I, like, yeah, this does not want to go on. And obviously the one with the bag change indicator wouldn't want to go on either. So yeah, you can't retrofit a bag change indicator onto this version at least. So I actually did decide to put the bag from the Dash R into this unit because between my three power forces I do not want to dirty another bag only slightly and then obviously not be able to store it because of the dust and everything and end up wasting a bag so at some point I will upgrade to HEPA bags and that'll make this a lot easier so there we go and it did have the post motor filter that's different, that's smaller than my other two units that are older. And let's look at the exhaust filter. It says just mark filter right out. This is HEPA. This is probably the standard charcoal filter. And this does not want to open. Wow. Oh my god, this does not want to open. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So this does have the standard. Again, this does have some slight dust, but I don't think that's dust from it being used. This does have the charcoal filter, so I am going to switch this out with a different, higher quality exhaust filter. In goes the nicely sealed Febreze filter, just to improve the scent and filtration. Can I get this closed? There we go. Okay. So that's that. And that's basically it. I guess for now until I run it, video's over. But yeah. Intel Tech Studio signing up.